Thank you so much, Dr. Basham, for joining us. Dr. Basham is a professor of special education at the University of Kansas. He's also the principal investigator of SIDL. He is the senior advisor at CAST and the co-founder of the UDL Implementation and Research Network. His research interests include UDL, instructional design and technology, STEM education, and innovation. His work focuses on developing future-ready learning environments that are equitable, beneficial, and meaningful for all learners. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Basham. Hi, Samantha. It's great to be here. Uh, you know, we've been doing these for a while. It's kind of funny that we're doing one on me now. <laughs> I mean, you have very interesting research and there's a lot going on, especially in the just explosion of AI and, and all the things that are happening. Um, it's it's really relevant. So let's let's dive in. Yeah. What issues are you trying to address through your work with personalized learning, AI, UDL, um, as it relates to personalized, as it relates to personnel preparation and or education systems as a whole? You know, I that's a great question. Um, I probably should have looked at these ahead of time, actually. Uh, the A lot of my work has been on how do we support UDL-based environments? And within that, then we have looked at personalized learning, uh, wherein we develop environments where all kids, every single kid in a learning environment has a personalized learning plan. Some kids also have IEPs. Um, and so... And we've found that in personalized learning environments, for instance, that when we integrate technology and when it's based on UDL, that that really all kids are can be successful. Um, but that students with disabilities also make huge gains. Um, and that these environments, by and large, just accept variability uh, as a as part of human nature. Um, and there's so they in, tend to be very inclusive, et cetera. Uh, so when we, how does that relate to personnel preparation? I think uh, one of the things we do in personnel preparation is obviously prepare educators and spe special educators, general educators, et cetera, to work in these in, in in these environments. And so, in the work that I do with teacher preparation and uh, is focus on uh, implementation of UDL, focus on you know database decision making. Um, and really, what's it mean to be a designer of these environments? Because oftentimes in personnel preparation, we don't really think about educators as designers. Uh, we often think about educators as practitioners. And one of the things that we ask for in UDL-based environments, and especially in personalized environments that are UDL-based, is really that educators take on a different role, one of being a designer. And, and so that means looking at your goals at, and at your students and contextualizing those things together, obviously intermeshing that with database decision-making and how to support the outcomes that are being desired. So I think it, it means a lot to personnel prop and the way we design our education systems. Thank you. Can you walk us through how your work supports outcomes for students with disabilities? Well, I mean, I hope my work really supports outcomes for all kids, but especially those kids with disabilities. I mean, I think, you know, if we take disenfranchised sort of uh, students throughout the education system, primarily those with disabilities, uh, oftentimes they are completely overlooked in, in some of the, in the innovations that have taken place throughout society. And so placing students with disabilities at the center of that discussion and designing uh, for the kids on the margins, as has been said multiple times, really helps us support the design of better technologies and better innovations for all kids. And I think the research that uh, myself and my colleagues have done around personalized learning, around UDL, uh, really kind of supports that notion. I mean, that if we can have an innovation or a technology that is accessible for all kids, all means all like what, you know, and, and that's a critical component for the work that we do in our schools and a critical component for way we should be thinking about the next innovations coming out of Silicon Valley or anything else that goes on in society. 
it's exciting to think about what's coming next um, yeah. and just how we can how we can structure things to support all students uh, yeah i think as as we've talked about siddle i mean this you know the ai uh the the while well, ai has been around for decades uh the newest uh versions of ai are really transforming kind of what's going on and i think that's one of the conversations that we need to be in uh, we need to be at the forefront of those conversations because the reality is all technology is is a tool um every single piece of technology that we have be it you know something like an iphone or be it something uh like an ai uh, be it this coffee mug here. <laughs> I mean, technology in and of itself is always a tool. And it's how we utilize those tools to support uh, to support our own creations or to support humanity is a critical component of what we should be doing and talking about. And if we don't include all kids in that conversation, if we don't include all individuals in that conversation, we're going to miss out on 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 being able to support some kids and, and being able to actually come up with better designs and better outcomes for all kids. And so a lot of what we're doing and a lot of what we have to think about, especially with AI, is what does this mean for students with disabilities, for individuals with disabilities, and what's it mean for society as a whole? I think that's a really great segue into our next question, which is, how do you integrate technologies into your teacher preparation programs? How do you teach that, that what does it mean piece? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I use, you know, the UDL framework as a core component for thinking about not only technology, but also evidence-based practices, high leverage practices. And um, so I always frame the integration of technology around the human condition, around the goals that we're trying to accomplish. So looking at human variability, looking at the goals of the environment, looking at the goals of the individual and designing around those things. And so being able to not only integrate the technology in so that I can model that for my students, but also really being able for them to see and experience and then go off and uh, uh, take it on themselves. And so it's it's kind of a process of really thinking about. And so we do things like in my uh, teacher preparation class, my pre-service course that I teach, one of my pre-service courses, we really kind of focus on design-based thinking. <laughs> and it sounds kind of strange, right? Because um, Because it's really not about the technology. It's really about how do we, you know, what is the design process? How do we support the design process? And what's it mean from a, from a human behavior sort of perspective to understand design? And then what's it mean for an educator to take that on? And then suddenly the technology and all the other, the, pra the evidence-based practices, the high leverage practices, they suddenly converge and seem to make sense because now it's like, oh, well, I'm just trying to do this. And, and it's a process of iterative design and, and, and that's really goal focused. And I think that's one of the things that we're, we're really um, try, that I try to integrate in when I think about uh, preparation and the integration of these technologies. I think the next step after we talk about technology and get our pre-service teachers and personnel into the idea of technology is then trickling it into their future classroom. So how can we prepare or better prepare educators to use these technologies when they get into the field? You know, I think one of the things that for a long time in, in teacher education we've focused on is, you know, teaching them individual devices, you know, teaching students, uh, you know, here, here's PowerPoint. <laughs> Just like we teach, here's an evidence-based practice. And what we have found is there's a huge research to practice gap that what we teach them in personnel preparation doesn't always stick when it relates to the classroom. And maybe it's, I mean, we don't really fully understand why that fully takes place. However, what we do understand is that, um, you know, as educators go into the classroom, 
everything changes. There's, there's, you know, lots of activity going on. There's different goals that are taking place. The, the school district may be heading in one direction. The students may, the teachers may be heading in another. I mean, so it's a very complex sort of environment that our teachers have to work in. And so being able to teach them how to uh, not learn the individual sort of technologies or the individual sort of practices, but to learn how to be, again, better designers in an environment, to, to learn the actions to understand what's kind of going on in the environment, to use something like the UDL framework to look at the barriers that may exist in, as a student is trying to accomplish their goals. And then having them think more as a, as a designer or, or learning engineer or something like that, where they get to bring sort of the problem solving process and critical thinking to the table, uh, where they get to, to go forth and design it. I think it, I think what it does is it prepares a better professional and also helps overcome that research to practice gap that we've been encountering for so long. Absolutely. Um, with your research in AI, this question is going to be really interesting. Um, what implications do you see for future research and what are some questions we might be asking? <laughs> I, you know, Again, I, we've kind of talked about this internally. So, so you and I have had some of these conversations or uh, we've talked about it in class that you're in right now, uh, but we've also talked about them in civil. I mean, I think there's huge implications for where we're heading as a society with, with what we're currently calling artificial intelligence. It's probably, they're probably more large language models than truly artificial intelligence. Uh, but, you know, I think some of the things that we're going to be facing as a society uh, and in the education system as a whole, and specifically in special education, come down to not only what is effective in supporting human goal attainment, because that's that's one of the critical things. I mean, we measure intelligence by and large across society uh, through goals, you know, I mean, if you take an intelligence test, which we can get into those debates, but essentially it's like, you know, do this task and can they complete this task or can you, there, it's something about goals. And, and so if we continue to measure, measure these large language models on that same sort of concept of task completion, we're going to lose, uh, you know, because these machines can, they have much larger databases. Their accuracy of recall is much greater than ours, et cetera. So we need to start measuring these, these machines, these large language models on not goal attainment for the machine, but goal attainment for the humans. Uh, and so we have to be more humanistic as we approach the, our next round of research. Uh, we have to start thinking about how, how are the machines helping support us? How is this technology helping support us as humans from a humanistic sort of side? I think the other thing that we need to kind of get into are the ethics around this. Uh, you know, what are some of the ethical sort of issues and dilemmas that we're going to be facing in the future as a society uh, and across and across and within the education system um, in, in supporting human learning? Um, I think these are critical sort of aspects. I think the other thing we have to struggle with here is, you know, historically the education system really hasn't changed that much uh, for for generations and and you know uh, decades, maybe even centuries. I mean, the process of learning, although the medium may have changed, I mean, the process of learning has pretty much kind of stayed the same. Uh, I think we have to think about what it means for our curricula that are out there and what are the teaching stand, what are the standards we're teaching kids? How is that process taking place with these new, new technologies? Um, and is there a better way to measure learning outcomes uh, with these new technologies embedded in that, in these conversations? Those conversations are going to be interesting to be a part of and continue to just hopefully change lives and change our education system as a whole for the better. It's definitely an exciting time to uh, be in the work and be in the field that we're in. Uh, that's that's for sure. That is I would absolutely argue for sure. 
there's never not an exciting time to be in the field of education. Things are always changing. This is right. I would tend to agree. What else do teacher preparation programs consider moving forward? Oh, I, you know, I, it's, I don't know if it's new um, and maybe it's some of the stuff I've already highlighted, but we need to prepare teachers to be better at adapting uh, to new situations. I mean, you kind of just highlighted it. I think the education system, as we just witnessed during the pandemic, and those of us who have been around doing this for a while have recognized that, you know, educators are always called upon to deal with the world's problems. Uh, you know, when the economy is not doing well, we need to prepare better better workers for the for the future uh, to, to support the economy. When, when you know, uh, uh, AI is coming forth, now we need to start thinking about that. I mean, so I think we need educators that can be more adaptive, that can look at sort of larger system sort of issues and kind of be systems thinkers uh, that can take on that role, as I've kind of already highlighted, the role of a designer, the role of a, a learning designer, uh, that, that can, or, or some people even call learning engineers, someone that can actually go into an environment, make use of the data, identify, uh, the, the goals within the environment, and then be able to come up with creative solutions to support the students in, in, in accomplishing the, the goals. Um, and I think that, that piece of it is something that we have not, as an education system, always focused on. The idea of preparing teachers to use XYZ evidence-based high leverage practice, that's okay um, and that's necessary, but it's the idea of how for them to effectively use those practices in what case and what situation and what context. And then within those within those practices and within the use of practices and the integration of technology, how to do it in an effective manner and knowing where the, how they can tweak these things based on the context that they're facing. Um, because what we know about education is it's always changing. The, the, you know, the goals will change. Uh, the technologies will change. Um, when we need to prepare in a, a workforce, we need to prepare educators as professionals that can that could that could take on those changes and and face them with some sort of understanding and clarity. Thank you. Uh, last question. Um, are there any specific technologies or resources that you would suggest um, that our teacher preparation and related service preparation folks get involved with or learn more about? You know, maybe not technologies. I mean, we can we can go through and list a bunch of technologies, but but uh, really, I think you know, obviously, the universal design for learning framework would be important. I have a dog here; it's freaking out. Uh, but uh, you, the UDL framework, I think, is important for us to kind of come to grips with and what it means, and how to actually implement it successfully in a in a teacher preparation sort of classroom uh, it, uh, it class. And then also really to think about design-based uh, design thinking and and the design process and how how that plays a role in what we do. These are things that that are probably precursors to to using technology effectively. The technologies will come and go, um, and what we have to think about them as is simply the tools that they are, um, and and supporting the appropriate use of the tools and understanding that the meaning these tools kind of bring to the environment and how we actually utilize them to effectively meet the needs of the, of the students we're trying to, to, to support and serve is critically important. Well, thank you so much. Um, your research is fascinating and I can't wait to see what comes out next. Great. Well, thanks for uh, calling me to do this research and practice brief. Uh, we've, I, it's actually, I think one of the most, widely used resources on the CIDL website. Uh, I think it's kind of funny that we're doing one on me, but uh, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I think you know, uh, it's critical that people understand these relationships. Absolutely. Thank you.